Hey folks, welcome to Bolts and Brass. Today we are talking about ammunition and accuracy and what makes one not better but more accurate or less accurate <clears throat> than an otherwise similar load. Now, most people think accuracy is, is the gun. It's mostly, you know, the, the hardware. And to some extent that's true. If you have really good hardware, even okay ammo does pretty well. Uh, it tends to lift it from mediocrity. But if you have really bad hardware and really good ammo, what do you get? Well, if the ammo is really good and the hardware is not defective, <laughs> you usually get okay results. This is very common for budget hunting rifles, um, generic kind of ARs. Uh, so what what is it? What is it that makes what makes the difference? I guess. Now, we recently did a bunch of ammo tests for the What Would Stoner Do build, and I was comparing a lot of different kinds of ammo in that particular barrel with that rifle. Two of the ammos were. Federals. Now, I have two ends of the federal spectrum, which is why I picked these, because I specifically have two very different quality levels, so to speak, uh, accuracy levels. This is what's known as XM855. Uh, it is essentially mil-spec ammo that was not used by the military. Now, there is all sorts of not even rumors, but speculation or, or hype about this ammo, specifically. Uh, green tip federal ammo. Now, this is their American Eagle version, which is about as low as you can get on their totem pole. But really, and I don't know this is true, this is just something I've heard that I could certainly believe. This is what happens when M855 doesn't pass the final inspection for the military. It is properly constructed. There's no defects. It just, that lot didn't meet the accuracy requirements in final testing, which are fairly stringent for the type of ammo involved. Uh, there's not a big margin of error for the, for the manufacturer. And they take that whole lot and they sell it to us. Works great for our purposes. Most of us are using this as, as plinking ammo and, and range ammo. We're not expecting great accuracy. If it's just slightly less accurate than the mil spec says it should be, we don't care. Um, in fact, we may have better results because the mil spec test is a particular barrel and a particular setup. Your barrel is different. But bottom of the barrel. At the other end of the spectrum, you have federal gold metal. So what's the difference? I have the two of them here. Now, you can see that this one's polished much more than this one. They obviously have different bullets. We're, we're going to get into that, but the, the different style of bullet is not really what we're talking about here. They are similarly finished. Um, ironically enough, the sealant on this one is visible. The sealant on this one is not, uh, but I believe these are sealed on the primer. There, there's a sealant so to keep moisture out. Not cantilevered at the top on the bullet, which means that the bullet doesn't have little ridges that the crimp seats into. These are probably not really crimped, to be honest. This has a cantilever and is very noticeably crimped. But they had different requirements. This one is very consistent case to case. The wall thickness, the exact height, the exact weight, the tension in the neck when they put that bullet in. They're very meticulous. On this one, they don't care so much. Uh, 
it's not as big a deal. What they're worried about, which is why you can see this is annealed, which is why it's discolored at the top relative to the lower half, they're looking for consistency of result. They don't want it to jam up in a machine gun. They don't want to get cracked cases under stress. They want to make sure it always goes bang and survives the environment more. This, probably not really waterproof overall. Um, and if you are hammering this in a magazine or a belt fed, this bullet can be pushed back into the case. This one won't. Now, let's talk about this guy. That crimp is great for basic level consistency. It makes sure that you have a minimum amount of tension, meaning they're, they're, you can't go below that line because you crimped it. You, you squeeze that sucker in there and you know you got that much. Now, here's an empty case. If I fill this with a particular powder and then I fill another case, the difference in capacity might be one or two percent. Why does that matter? Well, the internal capacity and the consistency of those things directly relates to the velocity you get. Now, the velocity spread between one round to the next round when you're working out the loads, you worry about your standard deviation. What is the normal amount you vary from, from your average? The smaller the better. That's part of the equation. The case is definitely important. But until you're getting to the super nitpicky, until you're trying to optimize things, not as important as the actual bullet. Okay, so we've got a Sierra Game King, 55 grain. It's a hunting bullet that is known to be very accurate. What makes it accurate? What makes this a better bullet in terms of precision than the one in here? Well, or, or many others. I mean, I'm not picking on that particular one in this case. I would be, but it doesn't deserve it in this case. This one, that copper, sorry, yeah, copper jacket is extruded very carefully, very precisely. It is a precision determined thickness as it's drawn up. It is, the base is very consistently formed. They know exactly how thick that is. Round, around, around, it stays the same. The shape, there's a slight boat tail to it. That is very carefully determined. It isn't just, eh, let's just shave the edge. The ogive, which is the actual curve, is very carefully determined. They give this round a lot of bearing surface in the, in the barrel, and then a nice smooth taper. It's a lot more like a target bullet in a lot of ways than a regular hunting bullet. Uh, when I weigh these out, if I've got one that is 54 grains, I'm shocked. I mean, it's, it's very, very rare. If you take normal plinking bullets or, or the steel tip penetrators like the 855, yeah. <clears throat> if you weigh those out, I mean, they're supposed to be 62 grains, 61, 64, 63, it's all over. And it makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference in the end result. For the military's purpose, it doesn't. For great accuracy of the range, absolutely does. Um, the concentricity Meaning, is it perfectly circular or is it a little oval or a little wobbly? I mean, that, that's huge. Some bullets are not round. They're close. Uh, but, I mean, we, 
as reloaders, we have gauges to measure this. And I mean, they're measuring in, in tiny, tiny units, but they, they measure the difference. And if you're reloading for real precision, you're doing everything you can to shrink that. You use bullets that are better, better quality, better control. And then you use dies for the, the case forming and the bullet seating and any crimp you're doing that are more consistent. Each step along the way, whether it's factory ammo, whether it's hand loads, whether it's you know, mass done reloads, um, you know, where somebody's sitting at a press in a shop, cranking them out, um, but they're just not a, a mass produced factory load. It all boils down to component selection and the, the degree to which those components are consistent because, and, and consistently good, I guess, because you can be consistent within a range, but if that range is too big, it has bad results. Uh, that's what you get with this, where it is very consistent, or the military would have completely rejected it and, and canceled the contract with the supplier. But it's consistent in a range that is big enough that it is not precision ammo. Whereas Federal's gold medal is very consistent with a very small standard deviation. And that leads to more accuracy, or more precision, I should say. Accuracy is how close did you get to your point of aim. Precision is how repeatable is that. That's it. Um, I don't want to go too in-depth. We're not trying to, to delve into the, the details here. I've just had people ask, uh, you know, why is one ammo different than another? Why does it matter? Why does my zero change when I change ammo? And basically the answer is everything matters. Every piece of that construction matters. And I'm gonna edit the hell out of that because I totally rambled and we want this to be short. So thank you for watching, have fun, take care, stay safe, keep shooting. Say hi. Oh, <laughs>